Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm thankful that you are here on this beautiful day. Okay, we're doing more math. This is our third math video in this sequence, so make sure you check out those other two if you haven't already. And my challenge for you today is I want you to comment down below and tell me what other math topic do you want me to include in this math series? So pause, give me a quick comment, and let me know what you want. Now, I want to make sure that you know how to use fractions on your calculator. So if you have a calculator like this, which most sites let you use this calculator, not you know the big paper version, but it's the TI-30XS. This is a calculator that I recommend that you get. And this button right here, this is the fraction button that you wanna make sure that you know how to use. So the N over D is numerator over denominator. And you can also hit second N over D, and then that gives you the U N over D, and that gives you a mixed fraction. So this is gonna be a really important button. And then also this right here in the green, you go second and then you press that, and it will switch from a proper fraction to an improper fraction or toggle between the two. And this here, F to D, that is fraction to decimal. So really important keys to know how to use on your calculator. And I do have a calculator video, so check that out if you haven't already. So Highstead has given me permission to use their practice problems. So here's one of them, and then we'll continue on with a few others. Which of these numbers is closest to the value of the expression 1 6th plus 2 fifths? Okay, so you have a couple of options here. You can actually add the problems together, but it wants to know here what is the closest value. So technically, do you have to add them? Mm, I probably wouldn't, and I'm not going to show you adding them, but in the other ones, we will, okay? So here we have the denominator, which is the number on the bottom, is six and five. And we know that we can't add a six and a five together if, if it's a fraction and that's the denominator, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna kind of do our best little guess, okay? All right, so notice here, A has a five on the bottom. We'll, we'll stick with that one. B has a seven, let's get rid of that one. D has an eight and then E has, has the three. So now we're left with just two. And if you can do that, eliminate some of the answers and then just guess, that's actually a really good technique. So we have two fifths and three fifths. So what I'm gonna do here is I know that one sixth is pretty close to one fifth. And let me show you how. So if I have two little bars here. We're gonna call these candy bars, okay? And so I'm gonna break this one into six pieces. And I'm gonna break this one into five pieces. And I have one sixth, so we're, we'll call this um, a, a symphony bar. Those ones are pretty good, especially the ones that have like the toffee in them. So there's a symphony bar. And then here I have, we'll call this, we're going Hershey style, the Mr. Good bar. Okay, so I have the symphony bar and the Mr. Good bar, and I'm gonna break off a couple pieces to give to you, my friend, okay? So now how much am I giving you? Notice here that the one sixth, I mean, it's almost one fifth, right? Don't you think like this, this num, this right here, isn't it almost this right there? Yeah, we're just gonna say it's one sixth, okay? So we're gonna say, uh, or sorry, one fifth. So we're just gonna say one fifth plus two fifths. And because they both have the same denominator, that five, we can just add them together. So one plus two is three, and five just stays the same on the bottom. So how much of a candy bar are you getting? Three fifths. So C is our answer. Uh, and it's just kind of doing a little bit of rounding. Now. If you're taking the high set test, you're so lucky because you get a calculator the whole time. So make sure that you know how to use your calculator, right? This button right here, that's gonna be your fraction button. Make sure you know how to use that. And if you're doing the GED, 
you may or may not get a calculator on this part, so really just follow along with what I taught you. Which of these fractions is closest to the value of three-fifths plus one-fourth? Okay, now this time, friends, we are going to actually add them together. So let me teach you how to add fractions together. I actually have a whole video that goes into this a little bit more. So we're going to say three-fifths plus one-fourth. And what we need to do is we need to see, hmm, what is the common multiple of five and four? So what number do five and four both go into? Hmm, 20, right? So they both go into 20. So I'm gonna put the 20 on the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is this right here, the three fifths, I'm going to multiply that by four, right? Because five times four, is what gives me 20. So now I will go four times three, so right in here, four times three is 12. Let me change colors here. And then this part right here, I'm going to multiply that by five, because I know that four times five is what gives me 20, the number on the bottom, that, uh, that denominator, okay? So what is one times five? Five, and now I just, add the numbers together. So 12 plus five is 17. And then I just keep the 20 on the bottom. And look friends, there's the answer A. Uh, definitely not estimating like the other one was. This one is giving us the exact number. Okay friends, do me a favor. If you are still here, give this video a thumbs up. You've made it through two problems, you're committed. And let me know that you are purely persistent. Which of these numbers is the closest to the value of the expression 8 ninths minus 5 sixths? When I look at these numbers, I think it looks like a date, right? It looks like August 9th through May 6th, right? But sometimes fractions have that slash and sometimes they have the line, just like we we're looking at in the last few. So this time, subtracting the two numbers. So we have 8 over 9 minus 5 over 6. So let's think about what is a number that nine goes into and six goes into. Sometimes that's called least common multiple or LCM. Okay, so nine, does six go into nine? No. Does nine go into six? No. So we could multiply them, but there's a number that is even smaller that they both go into, right? And that is 18. So we're gonna take 18 and make that our bottom number or our denominator. Okay, so how many times does nine go into 18? Two, right? So I'm gonna take both of these and I'm going to multiply it by two. So nine times two gives me that 18 on the bottom and then two times eight gives me 16. So now I know 16 over 18 is equal to eight over nine. Now. How many times does six go into 18? Three, right? So I'm going to multiply this times that by three. So six times three is the 18 on the bottom and five times three is 15. And now I just keep my 18 on the bottom, my denominator, and find my numerator, I go 16 minus 15 is simply going to be one. And there's my answer, A. Friends, you made it to the end of the video and I am so proud of you because sometimes fractions are not people's favorites. Oof. But you did a couple, so go in and practice a few of the other fraction videos that I have to make sure you really know how to use fractions and practice on your calculators so that when it comes test time, you know how to use the keys in case you get the calculator on a portion of the test that uses fractions. Friends, I believe in you. Make sure that you believe in yourself too and practice, practice. You can do this. And my friends, I will catch you in the next video. Stay purely persistent and believe in yourself. Peace and God bless.